Johnny here with a new video on to re-enlist or not to re-enlist. So I'm going to start off with going on down my list with the pros and cons that I have created. And this is all my opinion, so I'm going off what I know and what you could find out for yourself if you research or just if you're in already, you probably know most of these and if you guys have any other ones that you want to add to the list uh, feel free to comment down below and add to the story and we could uh, go from there. I'm gonna go down my pros list first. You being in the Navy you get a guaranteed paycheck first and 15th of every month so you don't have to worry about whether you're gonna get paid or not and uh, a lot of people like job security, so that's guaranteed security. They have to pay you, they're gonna pay you no matter what, and you're gonna see that money in your bank account. So that's one pro, uh, going down the list. Room for improvement. Basically, you're almost guaranteed to rise up through the ranks if you put in the work and time and you study and you pass the tests. The only thing I don't like is the ranking system isn't like based on what you're doing, you know? Like, it should be based on what you actually know and how you perform your job. You can rise up to the ranks, but it's more based on how you perform on the test than it is how you perform in your job and what you actually know. I really don't agree with that to, to be honest because i rather have a ranking system where it's based on your supervisors see what you do every day. They know how you work, they know what you do, and they know how you contribute to the Navy. So I believe, like I feel like they should be in charge of whether you rank up more like they should be in charge of that more than anything or anyone else because see how you perform your job if you're doing a good job every day you're putting in extra time extra work and you prove that you know what you're doing they should have the opportunity or like power to promote you if they wanted to because why is it going to be based on a test solemnly and then you're like a really good worker because I've seen people that are they know everything in the job and they know from hands-on stuff like they know what they're doing they know safety they know everything and how to do step by step but then when it comes to tests they just completely can't take the test and they end up failing and not ranking up because it's on paper and you're choice like I don't know that's just how how I'm thinking but you could let me know what your opinion is all right moving on down the pros list is networking so obviously you meet a lot of people in the Navy uh, you have the chance to travel everywhere in the world when you go on deployment uh, go to different countries or wherever the next port visit is and you could network if you wanted to. You you meet everyone that's on your ship. If you go TAD to somewhere else, you can meet everyone there. Get their information, phone numbers, if you want to hang out with them later or for possible business opportunities. And just partnerships through that can happen easily because you have all this access to all these people. Uh, going down the list, benefits. Um, going to like free schooling, all the like your healthcare and all that stuff, all the benefits you get if you stay in, what, all the other stuff you see, like the stuff on base and uh, other opportunities you have through the Navy. That's about it for my pros to uh, re enlist. Starting with the cons list, you have limited free time because depending on your work hours, work schedule, 
whether you're out to sea or import, it plays a big role in that. So you could work, there's honestly no set like time frame of working. It's usually 7 to 16, but it can change to anything that the uh, CO permits. And 30 days off per year. That honestly, to me, that's not a lot, but I know to other people they say that's actually good because that's more time. You get paid during, you get paid a month out of the year that you don't have to go to work you could decide to take leave or save it up it's up to you to me that's just not enough time I'm not complaining I'm just I'm saying my opinion uh, time away from family so I mean some people are lucky enough to get stationed in back at home where they used to live and they get to go see their family on the weekend or possibly every day if they live close enough but most of the time, people are not that lucky. There are a few though. A props to you if you get that, honestly. Time away from family, if you're a person like me, you cherish family a lot and you you just grown up with your family all your life and had that close relationship with everyone. That's how I, like I hold family to my heart. That's the one of the, I'd say the number one thing in my life, to be honest. So that plays a big role in some people's lives. Uh, being away from family, it's hard and whatnot. Stressful environment. A lot of people have a hard time like dealing with the stressful environments that work puts in. Being underway for a certain amount of time and just you have to get all these qualifications within a due time limit, otherwise, you're just gonna have other work to do on top of that and it's just gonna make everything stressful if you let it. You can't move around a lot. Like you have to stay wherever you're stationed. You can't say, oh, well, I'm gonna go travel out of the country this weekend. And, well, you can't because you, you're not allowed to. You have to take leave and you have to stay here because you could be called in at any time. Some people like that. Uh, sick in one place and sick to their daily routine. Some decisions are made for you, like certain qualifications that you have to get, they just really throw you into them and you can't say no. You have to go get it no matter what because they need you to fill the role. Um, honestly, low paycheck for for people in the military. I mean, I know a lot of people know that, like coming in, we get underpaid for the amount of time we put in and amount of work and risking our lives every day, especially on deployment and whatnot. But we didn't really sign up for the pay we signed up to serve our country. And that's what I hold true to myself, but I'm just throwing that out there on the con list because, I mean, I don't know if it'll get addressed. Maybe it will or not. I'm not sure. But I know a lot of people agree that we military personnel get paid way less than we should. So next, out to sea time, which contributes to your limited free time and time away from family. You have no, you don't really have any outside contact and you're just out there working hard every day, just trying to go about your daily routine and whatnot. <clears throat> some people like it underway, some people don't. It just depends on your mindset. And there's that possibility of injuries, whether it's over time or just sudden injuries because work related things like it's hard not to like bang yourself up when you're underway because the ship is like moving all over and you got to go down the ladder wells and up the ladder wells multiple times a day and there's always that chance that you're gonna hit your leg or foot or whatever on a step because you can be moving around quick and 
uh, like back problems, all that, or there's dangerous evolutions that go on that there's always a chance for you to get hurt every day. And that about wraps up my list of pros and cons. If you have anything to add for a debate or whatever below, feel free to do that. Um, you guys can leave your opinions down, down there too. Uh, again, this is just my opinion on everything, and I hope no one gets offended by anything. Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully we can get some debates going on below. Don't forget to subscribe for future Navy videos so that I can help you guys out even more. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. I will be my other links in the description as well and thank you guys see you next time